Ovidio, we are very happy that you're here, that Thank you him. that you join us in Oldenburg, and I'm also very happy, and uh, that we are able to that we are able to show um, a selection of your films, which are all mm, a few years old, and I know that you actually don't enjoy this, but I hope maybe we made you revisit a few things and and uh, enjoy how we enjoy your your work that we are presenting now well uh, it's true i generally don't like to see my movies especially after so many years but it just happened these days i saw a couple of them and uh, strangely i sort of i sort of like them uh, i appreciate i start to appreciate what i did in the past my work my passion and everything is there and i can see that no matter how I was a little bit uh, anxious to revisit the work I did in the past. There were many films you haven't seen in many, many years, right? All of them. Just when I finish a movie, and believe me, I s see the movie so many times while we're editing, uh, we have also projection, special projection, we have uh, uh, promotion, I'm, I'm still going, I'm still seeing the movies. But at the end of any promotion, at the end of I don't want to see the movie anymore. That's it. And some of them I even forget the, how, how the, which is the story about. No, well, I'm probably exaggerating, but anyhow, among 54 movies, sometimes I have to really uh, uh, make an enormous effort to remember the titles. I have a, um, you, I know you started in the film industry like uh, the, by distributing, then you were starting to produce. How did you end up directing? And how, what was the move? Was it like a, something you were always desiring, or what, did you some at one? Oh no, I don't. I'll, I'll just ask you. Yeah. The, well, the the the, pra, the practical was always a practical reason. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I wa I always wanted to direct a movie, not because I wanted to become a director. I don't think. I never want really to become a director, but I want to learn how to produce a movie. Yeah. And by directing a movie, by going every day on the set, by working with the crew, by, by uh, understanding the problem of the making of the movie on a daily basis, you really understand how to become a producer. Uh, as a producer, you must know everything as an independent producer, especially as an independent producer, and you know, you know that very well. So as an independent producer, I always uh, had in mind not to sit behind a desk, but really to uh, be in involved with the practical thing. In few words, my goal was, if I have to sit down with a uh, writer or with a director, I must have enough elements, uh, an, enough knowledge to tell him, hey, I don't like it, and I, I have to explain the reason why I don't like it, why I, w I want to do it differently, and I have to explain the reason why I want to do it. And to do that, believe me, going through the exper uh, experiencing uh, 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 the, 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 the way to direct a movie is a great way to understand to become a good and to understand problems and to become a good producer. Mm. That's one of the reasons. And specifically, I start to direct my first movie that I direct was Beyond the Door, uh, which I totally direct. Okay, before I w always somehow was be behind the screen, behind the camera, but never directing. Okay, that was my first movie. Why I did it for a simple reason. One I told you. The second one is because I couldn't find a director. Very simple. I try. I try to see who were the director that were could be capable to do a movie of this genre, but nobody really convinced me. Mm -hmm. and, and especially living in Europe and in Italy, it was hard to find a, a director that have the vision of the American markets uh, to direct American actors. Or, and to shoot in America, w and this has happened in, uh, in Beyond the Door. Yeah. So at a certain point, I decided, hey, 
why I don't do it. I know exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. Why I have to fight against somebody else and convince him to do something that maybe he doesn't want to do. So basically, I they say I, I did it. So I ask, and and it was an act of extreme extreme modesty from my side, because I was producing the movie, I was the finan I was financing the movie, I could direct it without any problem. Nobody would say no. Okay, <laughs> so I what I did, and, and as an act of modesty and uh, professionality, not knowing exactly, let's say the the technique of shooting a movie. I asked the cinematographer, my usual cinematographer, to join me yeah. as a co-director. And, and, and by, through this experience, I learned so much. And, and let me direct other movies afterwards. And today I could direct a movie like any other director without any problem. You know, I think this is very, it, it's, it's, it's almost strange <laughs> that this is such a unique thing because you are the, the pure independent filmmaker in this way you understand what you can do what is not fitting the budget and you, as you just said you know what you want and why should you fight with someone sometimes i also think the director is is there uh, should be something between the dp and the uh, producer and mm, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm i like this this concept very much and then are you fighting with yourself like you want continuously continuously <laughs> yeah you know is um I'm, 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 when I'm directing a movie, I want everything. I just tell you a story, okay? Yeah. Uh, doing Tentacles once, I ask my assistant director to have a certain kind of glasses for a kid who was, that was playing in a movie. I want to have round glasses like John Lennon. And this is my request as a director. And I asked him, I don't know why I had, I had this in my mind, but I had it. Okay, sometimes you don't explain rationally why, but it's happened. I wanted that. I want that very badly. And I asked him many weeks before shooting that scene. The day we had to shoot, the, 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 the kid came with a normal glasses, not round glasses. So I got upset with my assistant director. Said, I told you I want round glasses. Yeah. And I told him, you know something? I go home. I don't shoot today. <laughs> okay, but I walk for twenty steps and then came back <laughs> because, because I wasn't producer. A producer again. <laughs> you returned to be a producer. <laughs> hey, what the hell I'm doing? <laughs> I'm, are you are you crazy? <laughs> so basically, I again direct. I accept the glass the way they were. So this is a conflict. This is a yeah, continuous yeah, conflict yeah. that you have because. As a director, I, I want the loom, the, the moon. Yeah. As a producer, I have to say, hey, you can get, you cannot get the moon uh, unless um, you go out in the street and you find find one which is already there. But you cannot build the moon for for because you want it that day. So basically, this is a, this is is a conflict, no question about. To find the the right, uh, um, uh, let's say. Uh, combination, the right uh, balance yes. is not easy. Yeah, it's, it's, ve it's very difficult. And sometimes if the producer takes over the director, it's always myself, uh -huh. okay, yeah. what happens that you, be you start to lose certain kind of uh, 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 freedom uh, uh, or certain kind of uh, creativity. Yeah. That, and, and you somehow it's happened to me. I almost Mm, change a little bit, modify the story. Being a producer, yeah. okay, and damaging the directorial aspect, and it was a major mistake because sometimes I, in order to follow the market, I didn't do what probably was better to do as a director. Right, you know, and then with this experience and this way of or this approach to filmmaking, you came across Jim Cameron, who was unexperienced but as we all know now is a guy who's so against every producer I think in his way of filmmaking so what happened there how I met Jim Cameron oh, and yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well I met I met Jim Cameron I tell you uh, uh, because of Piranha yeah. Piranha is wasn't my was was not a project originated by me Warner Brothers had that project and the original producer of uh, Piranha One, 
the one of Joe Dante, uh, went to uh, uh, propose the picture to Warners, and the Warners say, okay, at one condition that uh, I, uh, with your son, it is who would produce the movie, and not you, because we don't know you, we don't trust you, we, know, we trust him. So the Warner came to me and said, do you like to produce the movie? And I said, uh, uh, why not? Let me read the script, but one condition. I want these two guys out of the, of, the, of the screen, of my screen, at least of my panorama, because I, I have to control the movie the way I want it, especially uh, doing a low budget movie with a lot of uh, ambitious special effects. Mm. So, uh, and they said, okay, so basically we negoci I negotiated with this, uh, the name was Jeff Checkman and Chaco Van Louis, the producer of the first Piranha mm. and the producer of the third Piranha 3D, Okay, and uh, uh, so I negotiated and they way out. I, I, gave, I gave them some credit, like I saw, I saw the producer, I paid them out, and I started to co be in control of the movie. Now, the story, the script they gave me was just awful. The worst script I ever read in my life. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I told Warner Bros., hey, this, we can produce this movie, it's so bad, the script is so bad. So they told me, okay, you change the way the way you want it. At one at one condition, that you keep at two condition, that you keep the piranha flying out of the ocean, yeah. which is one of, one of the most uh, not acceptable thing <laughs> that you can send from a scientific point of view, because the piranha they they they, they swim in the, in the river yeah. and they never fly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah. But for them, that was a must. So, uh, next step was to find a director. So I thought, let me find somebody, considering that it was a low-budget movie, that somehow is capable to do, uh, um, to do effects. special yeah. effects. Okay. At that time, it was not digital effects, special effects. It was just normal special effects. And we went around, and uh, somebody told me, hey, there is a guy who is uh, right now working in the second unit of a picture called Escape from New York. Oh. And, and it seems to be very, he seems to be, to very, be, be, be very capable. His name is James Cameron. I said, okay, let him come. So he came, he came and, and we had exchanged a few questions. I immediately saw the guy was very smart and intelligent and a lot, had a lot of passion. I said, would you like to direct a movie, Piranha? He jumped. He was so happy, he said, oh my God, you really asked me to direct a movie? He said, yes, would you? Under my, of course, control and everything, I told him that I'm a person that has hands-on, that have, have hands-on, so, mm -hmm. so, so uh, he accepted everything. Now, the next step was to rewrite the script. So he came to Rome, where I also sh share my life, uh, in, and um, my, my, yeah, my life, and, uh, he started rewriting the script, having these two elements as a must, flying and, and coming out of the ocean. So basically, he, he tried and he wrote the script several times. I didn't like it because it's difficult, no? When something is not uh, natural, when you have to combine elements mechanically, like mm -hmm. this, in the, like in this case, it's not easy. They also want to have some fun in the story stuff like this, so not So he did his best, and he started to conceive also the special effects. And we prepared all the special effects the way he wanted it to be. Then we went to Jamaica, and we have a problem immediately, because the guy is, is absolutely uh, crazy in terms of that he, can, he cannot do it a low, low budget way. Because he repeats, not a shot, but a scene several times. He does it, the, the, the thing is wrong, he does it again, he does it again. <laughs> so you don't do this in a, in a low budget movie. You know, in, in a low budget movie, practically you should uh, have, uh, uh, as a director, uh, the best director in the world that he knows everything perfectly. And he knows what he wants. In the case of James Cameron, he didn't know what he wanted. Yeah, he was experiencing, he was at school with me. He was learning. And I had not. I had to take to take over, because on the, the, the 
day number eight of shooting, we were behind eight days, basically. <laughs> uh, and of course, we can, you cannot do that with, with my money, yeah. with a li limited amount of yeah. money, yeah. and with so much work to do, special effects like this. You can do that, okay. And we we're sh not shooting the special effects yet. So they were just normal scenes, and he was, we were behind a lot. So I took over, and I, but I asked him to stay next to me <coughs> up to the end of the movie and to, to learn. And he did it. And of course, he was very upset about it. He was suffering a lot. But uh, you know, we are not playing games. No. We're making movies. There are money involved. And you cannot just uh, uh, accept craziness. Uh, or we're not a school. I, I had to take over. And I asked him to follow, me, to ne be next to me. And you offered him to stay, right? You, yeah. you were yeah. kind enough to say, uh, you no, keep your... I tell you, I tell you honestly, I like him. He has, he had definitely great uh, sense of m making of a movie. He has a vision, has, he can, I, c I could see that. As a matter of fact, I, after this movie and he was asking me, shall we do another movie one? I always told me, I will do with you the third movie, yeah. <laughs> not the second, because you still have to learn. And you don't have to take advantage of my, uh, I'm not, a, you're not a school. I'm not, a, I'm not, this is not a school. Yeah. I'm making a real thing, right. okay. So basically, um, so he said, uh, she said next to me for the rest of the movie and I let him shoot all the underwater scenes. He did it by himself. We moved to uh, Cayman Island. We were shooting in Jamaica before. We, we moved to Cayman Island with a small crew and he stayed there for six weeks. Okay, so, uh, so I gave him the maximum yeah. liberty yeah. with a small crew, I could handle it, okay. The problem is that the special effect he prepared were a disaster. <laughs> so they the, the, the say the master of the, sef of the special effects, James Cameron, did a disaster on his first movie. At the end of the movie, we have to reinvent everything. We have to start from scratch when the picture was totally finished because we have to add the piranha and they had to add the flying piranha. Okay, that was not easy. So it took to me a lot of work, a lot of efforts, and also I went over budget somehow because uh, that's, uh, that, that, that was happened. And to... Uh, and this was your risk, right? Yeah, and to end the story with James Cameron, while he was in uh, editing the room, the, the movie, he, uh, I bought the rights for a book called Formula Man, and uh, that was Terminator. Oh. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I still have his, his drawings, great drawings about Terminator, okay? And when we finished the movie, he basically, I didn't see him for a while. Once I was going to, or to the head of, uh, chairman of Orion Picture, and I was going to his room, he was a good friend of mine, and he was coming out of, that, of the same room. So I told um, my friend, said, what is Jim doing here? I said, well, we're doing his next movie. It's called Terminator. I said, oh, great, said, but how do you, decided to, to, how did you choose him? Why did you choose him? What would make you so, uh, well, because I like the story, of course, it was Formula Man, <laughs> it was a good story. Yeah. And besides this, we saw his movie, which I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and we like it, small movie, you know? A very small movie. He, the guy didn't know that, the chairman didn't know that I, I produced it. Because <laughs> he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't see the, 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 the the main titles, right. that was my presentation. Yeah, yeah. So I saw his movie, you know, it's not a bad movie, small movie, but it's good where you can see that he has a good feeling about making movies. That was me. I did it, <laughs> almost, <laughs> oh, almost, oh, almost uh, everything, okay? Beside the underwater, see, which were very, very well done. Yeah. And this is... Yeah, but then he, he could be, he should be thankful. This t was his no, turn. He, no, no, he's a... a Difficult guy mm. has a bad temperament, mm. okay, and you know that that everybody yes. walk with him. Yes, I was, hear was, this wasn't, wasn't wasn't happy. He is a very he's had the, he had the point is that he he's an engineer. Yeah. He thinks uh, everything technically, 
As a matter of fact, when he did uh, the Titanic, I was surprised that he put some kind of heart in the movie uh, because he's very heartless, almost heartless, very technical, yeah. and, and he's good at that. Did. And, but the, the point that he did the good movie with Terminator and the rest of the movie for one reason, because he has a large budget. Super he could budget, do it yeah. again yeah. and again and yeah. again. Yeah. And if he made a mistake, he'd do it again. <laughs> and so so it's a, I, you can do that. Yeah. You know, uh, Charlie Chaplin used to say, and I think he did it once, that, uh, the, that the best film is the one you start shooting after the film is, is finished. <laughs> because you, ner you learn the mistake that was in the first version and you would take advantage of it and make a good film. Okay, and he does the sa same thing. You know, to jump from 80 million to 200 and I don't know how many minutes for Titanic mm -hmm. is the combination. He doesn't, unless it comes out perfect, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't go on. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, clearly but, not, but not made for independent. He, is, yeah. he, is a, he has a great vision. He has a he, he has good feeling. For, he's a good filmmaker, no question about it. He hates me, but he's a good filmmaker. <laughs> So let's talk about you again, Ovidio. So you, you've, you've been working with so many um, skilled and beautiful artists in all the areas of filmmaking. We shouldn't uh, talk only about James Cameron, but um, I was um, d um, always, when I see your films, I'm always uh, very pleased with seeing your the, the camera work the, the, and the music. This is something that I love and I, I mentioned this before, somehow it feels to me like especially the 70s were allowing a different breath in filmmaking and I think you you are a very special filmmaker with regard to this. Y yes, but, well of course it's my way of uh, 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 enjoying a, a movie. Uh, I think music is very important. I always had, in all my movies, I always have <coughs> the main music already done before starting the movie mm -hmm. because uh, having this I can I can even change the story of the movie and base the action of the scene to the movement rhythm of the music and this and this camera comes out very well instead of putting the music afterward which we do of course normally but I want to have before because the music inspired me. Music is very important. Also, of course, I always pick up a great, great cinematographers because I think this is the strength of a low-budget movie. I think the, stre the strength of a low-budget movie is a good cinematographer, great natural location, not construction where you have to pay a lot of money, but natural location that are free, okay, again, if I, I don't know, film uh, an apple against the wall of my um, room and I take the same apple and I put it uh, in front of the Golden Gate Bridge, I have a different thing. The cost is the same. The apple is the same. The Golden Gate Bridge is there. Yeah. has been built and cost millions, billions of dollars, but it's mine for the moment. <laughs> he is mine for that frame. And of course, gives you quality to the movie, gives you production value, and I think that I always try to pick up the best possible location available. Mm. And also, music is important, and the way you professionally uh, try to uh, film the movie is important. I always, let me tell you one thing: <coughs> when we use film, okay, uh, 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 generally, low-budget movie would use. Uh, something like uh, uh, 25,000 meters of uh, film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Normally, that's. I always spend a lot of film because I think that the capital that they have is the exposure that they have in a film. This is really my capital. I spend double. I use double quantity of film. Now they can all do it because of That's digital, true. they can film yeah, yeah. forever, film they want. but you had to make sure that you know how much you use. Yeah, right? but it, you know, because uh, the cost of the digital is, uh, compared to the film, is less, yeah. but not totally. 
you know, because there are other expenditure, expenditures, mm. Mm. technical expenditures. So in talking about the Golden Great Bridge, you were shooting beyond the door. A few, like you shot a lot in, in, in Rome, right? And then a lot in San Francisco. How was it? All the experience in San Francisco. Yeah. Then I built the apartments and some of the interiors of the film in Rome. But to build the apartment, I was very careful that had to be an American apartment, not... Yes. So my uh, art director bought all the little elements that you have in a house, yeah. you know, from the light switch. Light, light switch, everything. They are different in Italy. Totally. And I, I, we used those ones. Even the size of the doors, the size of the elevator, was totally American. Okay, and that was built. And then we had to do that also because the special effects involved. And, and, and in this movie, I have to say that, and this is another way of giving, that we gave value to this movie. Okay, that was a, a low budget movie compared to and your the Exorcist. first film as a director, right? Yeah, and it's, it was a low budget compared to The, the Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. My budget was $400,000, $500,000 which was not that bad, but still was low, okay? Uh, compared again to an American, major American movie. So I decided to get the best special effects available in the world. And I, I thought, who, which is the movie that had good special effects artist? 2001. Oh, wow. So I, ca I said, I can't call Trumbull to do my yeah. movie. But I can call number two guy there. And his name was Wally Gentleman. So I call him, he used to live in Canada. And he came to Rome. And I tell, told him all the specs I wanted to have in the movie. And which was quite difficult for, because we're different than normal, okay? And, and he, was, he was one of the top special effects artists. So I said, I can do it, no problem. Then he asked me, how much you pay me? Well, this is, I start to really be, be in anxiety because the, the money I have in the budget was the money I used to, do, to give to my cinematographer, the same quantity I, was, I wanted to give to him, which was at that time, I think it was a $400 a week. But I was ashamed to ask him that, uh, to tell him that. So I said, oh my gosh, what shall I tell him now? So. But I got, I had a good idea. So I asked him, how much did you get from 2001? And he told me, I think $2,000 a week for three years. <laughs> so I said, he gave me the answer. I said, you gave me the, I told him, you gave me the answer. You made so much money with this movie that you have, can afford and accept $400. <laughs> and he did. And he did, he said, I like you guys. He said, I like the way you, Approach, approach it to the, the whole thing. Oh my gosh! Sorry. Yeah, and you made the, the number two, the number one, which is always lovely. Sorry. So for the interview, time. We don't stop. We don't stop. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 15 minutes, I guess. I we we pass, but it's uh, just uh, such a joy to talk okay. to you. Let's see when the gas is empty. <laughs> No, they're all out. <laughs> My wife called me. She, oh. They're all out. Oh, they kicked them out? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Where yeah. do we find them now? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyhow, we got the best. We got some, some lovely things, and it's, it's uh, such a joy to have you here, Ovidio. It's, uh, what can I say? I, I, would I tell you, we, we need to have another interview. Yes. Yeah. I promise next year, okay? Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'll be here. Yeah. Handshake. And we do it next year. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you so much. Goodbye.